cross exam. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, Ms. Zachary. Good morning. Ms. Zachary, in, uh, in, in this case, you agreed to cooperate with the state. Is that true? Yes. And you agreed to come in and testify against Ms. Gutierrez Reed. Is that, is that correct? Yes. And as part of that, you entered into a cooperation agreement with the state. Is that right? Yes. And that cooperation agreement indicates that if you agree to testify, and you have to provide truthful testimony that you will not be prosecuted for any crime. Is that right? Yes. So as part of your being here, you have a complete immunity from being prosecuted, correct? I guess. Well. Can you speak up, please? Yes. yes. Sorry, I'm a little bit closer. Was, uh, it's okay. Is that better? Hey, uh, it, is that your understanding of the document that you have a complete, that you're not going to be prosecuted, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, you testified yesterday that you had, uh, as far as the props roles, you were Hannah's boss in that role. Is that right? I wouldn't say boss, I guess a supervisor. What I said goes with props. And Hannah was a props assistant, correct? Part time. Okay. And she was also a part-time armorer? Uh, full-time. Uh, your understanding, she was part-time props and full-time armor. Armor was her main duty, yes. Okay, but she was also doing props as well, correct? When there was no firing of any guns, yes. Well, didn't you ask her on several occasions, for example, to uh, do things like rolling cowboy cigarettes? Uh, that was one day. Well, you ask her to prop up other characters at, at times, right? Uh, the only props that other characters had were the guns. They didn't have uh, their belts? Uh, well, yeah, they had belts. And they didn't have, for example, uh, glasses or other items that they needed to have on them? What type of glasses are you talking about? Uh, anything you'd have in a Western movie, hats, glasses, they didn't have other props? Those are wardrobe. Okay, what other props were there with regard to these actors besides firearms? Um, there were very miscellaneous things depending on the scene. There was a day where we were in a saloon, there were whiskey glasses, there were rolled cigarettes, um, there were a poker sets, those kind of things. And those props had to be provided to those actors, correct? Um, yes. Okay. And, and you also testified that you had some armor duties, correct? Correct. And so you were in that role assisting Ms. Gutierrez-Reed, right? Correct. And as part of that, you loaded and unloaded guns on the set? Correct. Now, you were trained, I think you said, by, by Seth Kenny on a prior film? Yes. How much training did you receive from Seth Kenny? I had maybe 10 days to prep for that set so within that amount of time when I would meet him he would show me how to work with the guns and ammo. So did you feel proficient, uh, very good in working with guns and ammo? In what I was using, yes. Were you, I think you've said in the past and you can tell me if you disagree that you were not able to tell a dummy round from a live round? Mm, I don't recall saying that. Now, yesterday you testified that you weren't familiar with the single action uh, revolver. Is that right? I didn't say, or are you talking about when I entered or started rest? Yes. Yes. And so, as we sit here today, do you know the difference between a single action and a double action? Uh, yes, now I do. Okay, and what is that difference? Well, the, what we are using on rest, uh, on between the two, uh, it involves um, how you load them and unload them, well, from my understanding. The, the difference in functional characteristics between a single action and a double action? Um, so with the single action revolver, I believe that's what we were working on with rest. Um, that was with uh, um, cocking the hammer back and the trigger at the same time to uh, load and unload the cylinder, whereas uh, with a double action uh, that the cylinder flips out. 
The cylinder flips out. Sorry, uh, you. Um, the cylinder comes out on the side to load the revolver and closes back. Before rust, had you worked with a single action type revolver? No. So on the prior set with Mr. Kenny, he had just shown you a double action? Yes. Okay. Um, so with uh, yourself and Ms. Gutierrez-Reed, you also had Nicole Montoya helping, is that right? Correct. And Nicole Montoya was also a props assistant, is that right? Yes. Now I think you said yesterday that uh, you, uh, you knew that there was going to be an armor and an armor's assistant. Did you say that? I knew that Hannah was going to act as both. Okay. Was it your understanding that on this film that there was supposed to be an armor and an armor's assistant at first? Yes. Okay. Now, um, with regard to your armor duties, you, we know that you loaded and unloaded weapons. Did you also um, take those at times to the actors? Yes. And I think we saw a video yesterday where, and see if you remember the scene, Mr. Baldwin is coming out of a little structure. He's shooting towards the cameras up with the blank ground. He runs up the hill with the child actor, and then he gets and somebody yells cut, and he still shoots, and then he cusses. Do you remember that scene? Um, yeah, I believe so, yes. And it appeared, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you were on that video running towards Mr. Baldwin after he shot. Does that, is that what happened? I'd have to see the video. Okay. I bet you don't recollect it right now as we sit here. Not at the moment. Okay. On how many occasions did you yourself take firearms to actors? Um, whenever Hannah needed it. Okay. When she needed assistance? Yes. Okay. You were working under Seth Kenny's license, is that correct? Yes. And that's with PDQ Props? Correct. And as part of that, are you on his paperwork as being an employee? Uh, I believe so. And so you weren't actually working at physically at his business, but you were on, on the paperwork, you were working with PDQ Props. Is that fair to say? Yes. Okay. Now, yesterday you indicated that First you said that you had thrown away the revolvers, but that was just a mis... Uh, you just got ahead of yourself, is that right? Yes. Okay. In reality, uh, what you did is you threw away rounds from two revolvers, is that correct? Correct. And that was right... Uh, that was after the shooting, correct? Yes. Now, after the shooting, do you recall how many minutes uh, went by, just roughly, before you threw away those rounds? I don't recall. In that time frame, you also had a conversation with Seth Kenny, correct? Yes. And on that conversation, you had texted him previously before that and said emergency? After the incident, yes. And then you, you all talked, and do you recall him giving you any instruction or advice as to what you were calling about? And don't, don't tell what he said, but do you recall him giving you any information? No. So, do you recall anything from that phone call? Again, not telling us what Mr. Kenny said, but do you recall anything from that phone call? Yes. What do you recall? Just him mortified. Okay. And don't talk about his words again, but just, uh, so your impression was he was mortified? Yes. Okay. Did, how long did that phone call last? Um, as I said yesterday, possibly 30 seconds, a minute. So then in that time frame, you then throw, throw rounds away from the two revolvers that you had previously loaded, right? I believe so, yes. So the two revolvers that you loaded, again, were uh, the Jensen Ackles revolver, right? Mm -hmm. And then this Sven? Uh, Swen. Swen. How do you say his name? Swen. Okay, Swen. So those two revolvers, you threw the rounds away from? Yes. And you threw them in a trash can? Correct. Now, you didn't tell anybody uh, at the scene that you had thrown those away, right? I didn't tell anyone, but it was in a public place. If someone saw me, then yeah. Well, um, you didn't want to let anybody know that, did you? I, they weren't the rounds in question, so I didn't think it mattered, and I had honestly forgotten. 
Well, you knew that, that somebody had been shot, at least one person had been shot, correct? Correct. You knew that 911 had been called, is that right? Uh, I didn't hear anybody call 911, but I had assumed. And you would have assumed that the police would have to respond to a shooting, correct? Sure. And so as part of that, wouldn't you think that the police would want to see everything on set? Yes. So when you throw away rounds um, that they may have wanted to see, don't you understand that to be an issue? No, because again, it wasn't the rounds in question. But that isn't your determination, right, to determine what's in question. That is the law enforcement's determination, correct? Okay. Uh, well, would you agree with me on that? Sure. Okay. So law enforcement's going to come, and, and you understand they're going to investigate what happened, and the rounds that you're throwing away could be possible evidence that would assist them. Would you agree with that? Sure. And so when you made that decision, was that, in fact, Mr. Kenny directing you to do something? No. You threw away those rounds and the two revolvers that you loaded. Was it your intention to get rid of the evidence that you had done? In other words, the two you had, you had loaded? No. Now, you also, as I understand, took uh, firearms, or you and a couple other people intended to take firearms to the prop truck, is that correct? Yes. And did you take revolvers? Did you take long guns? Do you recall? Uh, it was whatever was on the cart, but I didn't end up taking them back. You and who was it? Was it Daniel and Nicole? Correct. And so the three of you started out to take the firearms from the prop cart to the prop truck, is that right? Yes. How many firearms were there that you were taking back? I believe from a separate interview I had said something around nine. So all nine of those firearms, were those Seth Kenny's firearms? I believe so. All nine you all wanted to take back to the prop truck you were removing them from the prop car right after the shooting, correct? Yes. You said you didn't take them back, but did you start with them to start taking them back? I did. And what made you turn around then? Um, I got a text message or phone call from Brian Norvell, and he asked me to bring Hannah her personal bag. Where was her personal bag? I believe on the cart. So you then removed the personal bag from the cart? And took Correct. that, I'm sorry? Correct. Okay. And then who did you take that to? To Hannah. Okay. Um, when you took it to Hannah, her personal bag from the cart, where was she located when you gave that to her? She was with Brian behind one of the houses in the town. So we have the church, uh, we've seen the church, and we've seen where that was located. Where was the house? where Brian and Hannah were staying at that time? Uh, it was down the hill, a little <coughs> east, northeast of the, of the church. Did you know why Brian and Hannah were standing over there after the shooting over by the house? It was my understanding that Brian was consoling Hannah. Okay. So in any event, you walked her personal bag from the cart all the way to where they were at. Yes. Okay. And that was at Brian Norvell's direction? Yes. So you would agree with me, at that point, you didn't have an, I mean, that was somebody else telling you to do something. Yes. Okay. But, and it's not your fault on that one, but uh, on, in terms of taking that bag, I'm not trying to say that, but would you agree with me that that then took something from the prop card as well? Sure. At that moment. Okay. And again, this is before law enforcement has arrived? Um, I believe so, but I don't remember. Okay. Now, yesterday you said that you had thrown away the rounds in a state of shock and panic. Do I have that right? Yes. Now, did you previously um, state that you had thrown them away because you had done that before? That uh, I have thrown away dummies before. Okay. So, in your pretrial interview, you mentioned that Part of the reason you threw those away was that you had done that before after scenes, correct? Uh, sometimes, yes, if I didn't need them. So, 
Would you agree with me? You, you've given two explanations for why you threw away the rounds uh, in a shock and panic and that you had previously done something like that, uh, throwing, throwing away rounds. Would you agree with me? Yes. Are these dummy rounds? These are obviously reusable, aren't they? They are. So uh, when you throw them away, somebody has paid for those, like production or, um, well, production. Would mm -hmm. you agree with that? Yes. Did they instruct you, production instruct you, to throw those rounds away after scenes? No. So this is their property. Would you agree with me, the dummy rounds? I mean, you throw away blanks afterwards, too. Well, uh, if blanks can be reused again, wouldn't you agree with me that those are something that the set could use again that they purchased? Blanks can't be reused. Okay, well then, how about dummies? Sure. Okay. So again, my question was, would you agree that, that that's their property that you're throwing away? Um, I guess so. Okay. Um, so you made the decision to throw away the rounds and you then interviewed with the police on October 21st. Do you remember that? Yes. And that was the same day? Yes. And do you recall whether you told them that you had thrown away those rounds? I don't recall if I did or not. Did you tell anybody else that you had thrown away those rounds? Uh, I believe Nicole was standing there when they happened, so I'm sure she saw. Okay. After the, the shooting had happened, uh, did Ms. Gutierrez read, did you see the rounds that came out of the revolver? She showed me, yes. And did you see what happened to those rounds after she showed you? No. Did you take possession of the spent casing from Ms. Gutierrez Reed? I believe I might have. I know I had said that before. Yes. And so Ms. Gutierrez Reed hands you the spent casing, which is the one that's been fired, correct? Yes. And then what did you do with that spent casing? I believe I took it over to the prop guard. What? happened to the other rounds that Miss Gutierrez Reed had shown you from that revolver? I don't know. Did you follow up to see what had happened with them? No. Okay. With regard to um, that live round after you put it on the cart, did you touch that again? Touch the spent casing? Yes. Um, no. Okay. So you came back over, then did you go and check other rounds to determine whether you believe them to be live? Yes, as I said yesterday, I did check the box that was on top of the cart. Okay. Now there were multiple boxes on the cart, correct? Uh, I believe so, yes. And so did you rattle some of those rounds? Uh, in the one box, yes, that was on top. And you determined that you believe there were, I think there was a statement that and you can tell me if I'm wrong, but that you thought maybe half of them might be alive? That was an original statement, yes. And in hindsight, do you think that's not correct? As I said yesterday, I don't think that's correct. Okay. But in any event, you determined that some of them were, were alive in your belief? Yes. And who did you tell that to? Law enforcement. Okay. On the day of the shooting on October 21st, do you recall there being any safety meeting? Uh, no. That same day, there's no safety meeting. Do you remember right before the incident in the church, did Hannah take the revolver to go check it with Dave Halls? Yes. Okay. You were not in the church, correct? I was not. And you were located outside. Where, where were you? I was at the prop truck. Or not, sorry, prop cart. Prop cart. And your cart, was it to the right of the church? Uh, when you're looking at the church at the front door, then yes, to the right of it. Okay. The uh, revolvers that you remove rounds from and threw them away, you, do you remember how many rounds were in them? I do not. Okay, so you're not able to, to tell us whether there were six or whether less, you don't know? It's been two and a half years, no. Okay. But you did testify yesterday you knew 
you said that they were dummies. Correct. Hey, how did you know that? I personally checked them. And then you don't remember how many of them there were, though? No. When you interviewed with law enforcement, did they ask you for your phone? On the day of? Yes. I don't believe so. And you had been texting and, and talking to Seth Kenny, right? Correct. Had you been texting and talking to anybody else that day? Um, just, I, I don't remember. Okay. After the shooting, well, let me uh, back up. Yesterday, I think you mentioned, and tell me if I'm wrong, that you had not, you wouldn't talk to Alec Baldwin much on that set. Is that fair? No. Okay. Did you have Mr. Baldwin's cell phone number before the shooting? No. Did you ever text him before the shooting? No. Um, do you recall that you did text him after the shooting? Uh, yes. And how did you get his, Mr. Baldwin's number? His assistant had personally contacted me because um, I was in contact with him before, while we were shooting, and he had requested to talk to me. Okay, and so after the shooting, you and Mr. Baldwin, do you talk on the phone also? Uh, yes. And you also text? Um, a couple times. Do you recall making the statement on October 31st, 2021, that Alec called me and I'm trying to make sure I keep my facts straight? Uh, yes. And do you recall you made that statement to Seth Kenny? Yes. How many calls and how many, or how many calls, let's start with that, did you have with Alec Baldwin after the shooting? Maybe three. And did you discuss the facts of what happened with him? Um, it was more theorizing because he, he, we both didn't know what happened. He mainly would call and ask questions that I didn't have answers to. He was asking questions about the events and what might have happened, right? Correct. Did you ha ask him questions? No. You also texted with him several times. You, you remember that? Yes. You recall also making a statement on or about October 23rd, 2021, that you had talked to Alec and he's having a difficult time recalling things, like most of us, but he thinks that Dave handed him the gun. Um, I don't know who was, that was with. Uh, if I showed you a text message, would that refresh your memory? Yes. May I approach you on? I'm going to show you, and I'm asking you not to read it out loud, but just read the top text. And when you're done reading, just let us know. Are you finished? Yes. And I can have it back. Does that refresh your memory? It does. Okay. Do you recall making the statement that you had talked to Alec and he's having a difficult time recalling things like most of us, but he thinks that Dave handed him the gun? I do. And that would, you recall making that with Seth Kenny? Yes. Okay. After the the shooting occurred and the incident occurred, did you go back uh, on or about October 27th for the, the search of the prop truck? Um, it was, that would have to be the day that the police were there. And, and you may not recall the day, but do you recall it being five or six days after the shooting? I don't recall the day. Okay. Then. Prior to going, did you provide the code to the safe to Seth Kenny? Um, I believe I did. Before you had provided him that code, 
Who had the code to the safe? Hannah, me, and Nicole. You then gave the code to Seth Kenny. Did you give that code to anyone else? Um, I don't think so. The prop truck search happens. Are you present for that search? They were there before I got there. They had already started the process. When you got there, was Seth Kenny there? Yes. Did you retrieve some of your personal belongings that day? Um, not until after the police cleared out. Okay. Before that search, had you retrieved some of your personal belongings from the set? I had attempted to go back uh, because everyone else was able to go back uh, to their trucks to retrieve their things, but ours was still locked, so I was not able to retrieve anything. Ultimately, you did retrieve your property? Correct. Okay. At one point, there was a negligent discharge on set we've heard about, and, and that involved you handling a firearm, is that right? Yes. And again, you were trying to let the hammer down, and you had your finger on the trigger, and then it went off, is that correct? Yes. And that was with one of the revolvers? Uh, correct. After that, didn't you have a disagreement with Ms. Gutierrez-Reed? A small one, yes. Did you thereafter have discussions with people about wanting to fire Hannah? Uh, I didn't want to fire her. I had my disagreements with her, but I never actually fired her or okay. wanted to. Okay, you said you didn't want to fire her? No. Do you recall being interviewed on, on November 2nd, 2023, in this case? Yes. And you were asked the question, okay, did you want to fire her? Your answer is yes, and that's on page 19, 2 to 3. You're, did you want to fire her? You said yes. Okay. Do you recall saying that? I do. Okay, so is it true then that you wanted to fire her? From props, yes. Okay, but um, a second ago you said you had not made that statement, but... Yeah, I'm correcting myself now. Okay. So the reality is that you had wanted to fire her. From props. Yes. And other people had wanted to fire her as well, right? Um, from Seth or... Just in general. I believe Seth wanted me to do something about it, yes. And and I think what you just stated is you did not do anything, ultimately. I did not, no. One of the reasons why you had wanted to fire Hannah is that you didn't feel she was doing enough with her props duties. Correct. And you communicated that to Hannah as well, right? I did not. You did not tell her that? That you wanted her to do more in her props duties? I don't think I actually told her that. I just had asked her to do things and she didn't want to do them. Did you know that Hannah and Gabrielle Pickle then had a disagreement over props duties? I did hear about it, yes. Okay. And there was an email that you knew about? Uh, Hannah showed me, yes. Okay. And I'm not going to ask you to talk about the contents of it, but you did see an email on that? Yes. That was approximately October 16th or 17th that you had had that disagreement, right? About? Uh, with Hannah, that small disagreement. Oh, yes. And so that's five days before the, the shooting. Okay. And then at what point was the decision made by you that you wanted to fire Hannah? Was it the 16th? Was it the 17th? Do you remember what day that was? I don't. You talked to Seth Kenny about that? Yes. How many times did you talk to him about that? I don't know. Okay. Now, one thing I forgot to ask you was after the 21st, uh, after the incident had happened, you don't have a good memory of the sequence of events? I do not. Okay. You remember that yourself and Nicole had been at the prop cart when the shot went off, is that right? Yes. And you did not see Hannah at that point, or did you? I had not. Okay. 
right after it happened is the next time that you remember seeing Hannah was when they were unloading the revolver? No, she was in front of the church um, by herself looking at the church. Okay. And then at, at some point they unload the revolver and then she goes over with Brian Norvell to one of the other houses. Is that right? I believe so, yes. Okay. Did you see Hannah get loaded into the police car? Uh, no. After the incident took place and you uh, come back and given Hannah her bag, did you talk to people uh, on the set? Um, yes. And where were you standing when you were talking to people? I was in the town at one point and then back at base camp. So um, did those people include Alec Baldwin and David Halls? No. Who did you talk to? Uh, Jensen and Swen and Nicole. Did you ever see or hear about a lawyer being on set? No. Okay. After that, what time did you leave the set? To go back to base camp or home? Uh, to leave to leave completely. Maybe not until nine nine thirty. Okay, so you stayed um, approximately seven or eight hours. Yeah. Did you, what were you doing during that time frame? Uh, a lot of it was waiting around. Uh, we were at base camp for a long time, waiting to be interviewed by the police. You were interviewed then on site? Yes. Okay. Since you were on site, you would have had the opportunity to tell the police at that point that you had thrown those rounds away, right? Sure. And you don't recall whether you did that? I don't know. Do you feel like that's something that you would remember if you had done it? No. Okay, I want to... I'm sorry, just a moment, Your Honor. Do you recall ever telling law enforcement that you had thrown those rounds away? Yes. When, when was that? Um, I remember telling them, uh, like a month later, when I was talking to Detective Alex. Okay, we're talking about October 21st, 21, when this happened. Yes. And you interviewed then, and you interviewed um, with Mr. Scott Elliott on November 2nd, 2023, correct? With who? Uh, Sorry. That, that was an interview with an investigator on this case. Um, Mr. Elliott, do you recall that, that individual? I do not. Okay. And that... Uh, interview just to remind you you had an attorney present do you remember that interview I, I remember detective Alex uh, okay Elliot. do you not remember the interview in November of 2023 when spirit Gaines was present um, I do not okay if I showed you a copy of this would it might refresh your memory <coughs>
Ma'am, I just I want to make sure that you're understanding what I'm asking. So you were interviewed with the police, as I understand it, two times. There was one on October 21st, 2021, and there was one, I think, a month later. Do you remember that? Yes. And do you remember being interviewed a third time in a pre-trial interview in this case on November 2nd, 2023? Not with the police, but with other people involved in this case? I believe so. Okay. And again, I'll ask you, do you remember your the attorney, Spirit Gaines, was present? Yes. Okay. So that's the interview I'm talking about. That was approximately three months ago. Okay. Do you recall that? Yes. Okay. And do you recall in that interview talking about whether you had informed law enforcement? Of what? About the throwing away of the rounds? I don't recall what I said in that interview. Okay. So that was... That was three months ago, but I know you've had several interviews, but you do not remember that. Not the specific conversation. Okay. In any event, you did tell them at some point, you think, uh, that you threw those rounds away. Do you recall what exactly that you told them? I don't. Okay. Did you also tell them that you had transported those firearms from that car? Uh, or that you had intended to and other people helped you? I believe so. Did you tell them that you had taken Hannah's personal bag to her? I believe so. Did you take anything else from the cart that we haven't talked about that day on October 21st, 2021? No. You also talked to Weston Brownlee after the, the shooting incident? Is that right? He did send me a message, yes. So you texted with him? Briefly. And that was about some of the things going on in this case, right? Yes. Do you recall being angry at Ms. Gutierrez-Reed at one point in honor about October 29th, 2021, you said, I hope she's put in jail. This is outrageous. I don't remember the specific text message. I'd have to look at it. If I showed it to you, would it refresh your memory? Possibly. you've had a chance to read it does that remind you whether you said that yes so you agree that you said I hope she she's put in jail this is outrageous yes thank you Honor. I have nothing for you thank you oh, sorry, you're out of my moment. sure Ms. Zachary, uh, you mentioned earlier that you had rattled some of the rounds to check if they were live. Yes. Uh, did you notice that when law enforcement got there, the boxes were closed? Uh, I don't remember. Do you recall closing the box up after you had rattled the rounds? I don't recall. After, when the prop truck search was done days after the shooting, do you recall the prop cart being inside the prop truck? When police uh, came to retrieve the weapons, yeah. I don't remember it being in the, in the truck. Did you go in the prop truck during the search? After police left, yes. Did you see the prop cart inside of it? I don't remember. Did you ever get the impression after in discussions with Mr. Kinney that he didn't want you to say anything? About? About anything. Not talk about anything? With just anyone? Yes. That wasn't my impression. Okay. Do you remember a uh, point in time when you were texting with Mr. Kenny and 
you had indicated that you were talking to Alec Baldwin, and then he responds with an emoji? I don't recall. Okay. Um, you don't recall ever getting an emoji with the hand over the mouth? No. Do you know what that, that means, that emoji? That I'm talking about, one where it's just kind of going like that? Um, no, I, I mean... Does it not mean to keep your mouth closed? It's not what I see that as. Okay. Um, so in your testimony, you don't believe Mr. Kenny ever told you not to talk to people about what had happened. That, I, that's your testimony. I don't recall. Okay. All right, I have nothing further. Cross-exam, I mean, redirect, thank you. <clears throat> 